Hello everybody, this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine, and today I'm going to start a, a series, uh, a, a video series on an approach to improvisation, okay? Um, last week on Lessons with Marcel website and YouTube channel, uh, there was a video interview that Mickey Abraham um, conducted with me, and in the course of the video I talked about teaching my beginning students how to improvise right from the get-go. As Soon as they learn their first three chords, I start working on them how to improvise. And this method that I came up with, um, I developed with Tim May. He, he was a big, uh, you know, uh, he had the method basically. And then over the course of a number of years, he and I went out and taught uh, workshops on improvisation based on Tim's method and then we refined it and polished it over time. And um, we probably started doing these workshops in about 2008, 2009, 2010, that frame, time frame. And then I think in about, we'd done a lot of them. By uh, 2011, 12, we shot a video because some of the people in the workshop um, that took the workshop wanted a video that they could take home and, and look at to remember what we had taught. So there's like a two hour video of Tim and I teaching improvisation uh, that's available at flatpick.com if you want, want the whole video. Uh, I'm going to segment in, in, in the series I'm going to do here for Bluegrass Unlimited, I'm going to segue some of those bits from the video Tim and I did into these videos. So uh, when, when two guitars are necessary, one playing rhythm or whatever, we'll do that. But um, for the most part, I'm going to show you what we developed over the years and we're still teaching that workshop uh, during probably 2011, 12, 13 time frame we were doing it like 80 a year all the way all across the country we were traveling nonstop on the road I was living in an RV and Tim would travel along with me and we would do all these workshops um, and so we continue to do them we did one last fall in Oregon uh, Tim and I are going to be doing the pre festival workshop this year at the Walnut Valley Festival in Winfield, Kansas. If any of you are going to the work uh, that festival on the Wednesday prior to the start of the festival, uh, Tim and I will be teaching a full day workshop on improvisation. Um, and this is for any instrument. I'm going to be holding the guitar here. I'm going to be showing you examples on the guitar. But literally the same method, the same theory, the same everything applies to any instrument and in fact when Tim and I did our workshops we invited any instrument to show up and of course we had all the bluegrass instruments show up but we also had uh, a trumpet player show up one time, we had a accordion player, again it applies to any instrument the method that um, we teach for how to learn how to improvise and other people have different methods this is the way the one we came up with and we have found that that works pretty good. Um, I'm also going to be teaching uh, in October, the first weekend in October, up at the Thompson Guitar um, Shop in uh, Sisters, Oregon, doing the same workshop. So um, this is August right now that I'm doing this video and so next month in September we'll be in Winfield, Kansas uh, with Tim May and then in uh, October I'll be in Sisters, Oregon. So uh, sign up for those workshops. We'd love to see you. Okay, so I'm going to start real simple. So, you know, what, some of you may be wondering, how do you teach somebody how to improvise that only knows three chords? Well, as luck would have it, really, the answer is always in the chord, is what we say. And if you play a chord tone while the band, the song, is on that chord, it'll never sound bad. It may not be the best sound, it may not be the best solo, but you know Tim and I refer to this stage as fake it till you make it. If you want to take a solo, you just gotta play notes out of the chord while the band is playing that chord and then move to the next chord when the song moves to that chord. So all you have to know is the chords of the song and when to change. Uh, you know, and so that's really the first step you're going to learn. If you're in a jam session, you can look at somebody else's hand, another guitar player, or if you're on a different instrument, watch a guitar player, watch when their hands change, and then you know what chord they're going to. So anyway, 
it's a way to start. And like I said in, in the video interview with Mickey, if you start learning how to improvise right away, then you'll develop that skill along with all your other skills that sh you should be developing, learning your chords, learning your scales, learning repertoire, all of that. If you develop all those skills along the way equally, then you'll develop them all to a, to a much better level because if you just learn how to memorize chord changes and melodies and that's all you do from tab for a long time and then you say, oh, maybe now I'm ready to start improvising because you thought at the beginning that improvising was only for advanced players, then you're going to be way behind the curve as far as your improvisation goes and it's going to get frustrating. But if you develop that skill from day one, then it'll be easier for you. Maybe a little bit frustrating in the beginning, but you'll get it if you work at it. And I'm going to show you where to start, okay? So like I said, the answer is always in the chord. So all you have to do is hold that chord down that you memorized how to play and just play notes out of the chord for your solo. Could be as easy as that. And when it goes to the C chord, G, play notes out of the chord and you'll sound okay. It won't be great, but it'll get you by. Okay? Now, if you're a banjo player, you're accustomed to this. If you're a dobro player, you're accustomed to this because you hold down that chord and you do your rolls. And if you've learned cross picking on the guitar, you can do the same thing. Um, Mandolin, you can cross pick. You just got to play notes out of the chord, and if you've got that cross picking roll going, um, that sounds pretty good. Just like your banjo roll, your dobro roll. Make, make up different rolls. Don't do the same thing over and over again. Right there, what I did was pretty repetitive. Now, you don't have to be repetitive. You can be creative within the context of playing notes out of that chord. And more creative you get, and not worry so much about playing a lot of different notes because you've only got three that you can play over each chord. Work on things like articulation, work on things like timing, work on things like phrasing, work on these other, work on things like dynamics. If you work on that stuff, you can make it sound pretty good just using the notes out of the chord. And in fact, when advanced players come to our workshop and we're, we're going through this part of it, they look a little bored, like, eh, you know, that's, that's easy stuff. And we challenge them what I call um, a limiting exercise, and I learned this from uh, Jack Pearson. Um, Jack challenges himself, literally one of the best guitar players on the planet, he challenges himself with what he calls limiting exercises, and he says stuff like, well, I'm going to put on a five-minute rhythm track, and I'm only going to play on these three strings, or I'm only going to play on these three frets. And he has to come up with something really creative within the limits that he's put on himself, and that causes you to think differently about stuff. So even advanced players, if you're an advanced player, you're used to improvising, you're used to coming up with your own solos, try some of these exercises that I'm going to put out there for beginners, but try them um, at your level, you know, try to make it as creative as you possibly can within the limits. And the limits we have here is when you're playing your solo, you have to use notes, the three notes of a chord. Now, at this, at this stage, you don't even have to know what those notes are as long as you know your chord shape. Tim May likes to call this shapes and ears. You don't need to know the theory of what notes are in that chord as long as you know the shape of that chord. You can put down your fingers and hold their fingers there like you would play in rhythm and just play single notes out of the chord. Now you can also play a strum in there every once in a while. You can do a double stop every once in a while, which is playing two notes out of the chord at the same time. These are, you know, again, variations you can add within the context of only playing notes out of the chord. So that's basically it. Get a rhythm track, play along with it, um, a lot of these rhythm tracks that you see online, go to Bluegrass Unlimited website. We've got nearly a hundred rhythm tracks 
on our, uh, on our jam track section of our website and the chords flash up as they change and you can use the settings, the tool settings in YouTube to slow it down to whatever uh, speed you want. It could go, uh, they're all on their full speed, but you can go three quarters, half, one quarter, slow it down and then play whatever song is on there. Put your capo on if you, if you need to. Play whatever song is on there and just play notes out of the chord when the chord is being played. Um, it's going to be a little frustrating at first, like learning a foreign language, okay? You're going to struggle a little bit, but the more you practice it, the better you can get at it, and just be more creative as you're going along, okay? Now, once you become accustomed to playing single notes or added strums or added double stops, again, we're still in the context of our limit, which is playing three, the three notes of the chord. Um, then you can start to do the next thing to sound more like the song. And what that is, is phrase your choice of notes, make the phrasing like the singer is phrasing the song. Or make your choice of notes go along with the cadence of the song or make your choice of notes go along with the rising and falling of the notes like the singer is singing it or the instrumentalist is playing it, okay? Um, it's not that easy. Your musical ear and your musical memory has to be developed to a certain level to be able to hear a song and be able to hear that melody and play that melody right away. But things like phrasing and things like contour, the rising and falling, and things like cadence, you can pick up faster and easier. Um, especially in a song that you've heard before. Maybe you go to the jam and they're playing Lonesome Road Blues and you've never taken a solo on that, but you've heard the song before. You've got, you got that melody, you've got that phrasing, you've got that contour, you've got that um, cadence in your mind. Um, and, you know, the jam is going on, it goes around a couple times around the circle and you've learned the chords. When it comes to your time to play the song, sort of kind of, you know, and don't think you have to play like a string of eight notes like some of the fancy players. You can get pretty simple and uh, it doesn't have to be complicated, you just got to do it, okay? So let's take a song like Lonesome Road Blues, I'll play and sing a little bit of it and then I'll take a solo only using the, chord, the, the notes of the chord but I'll kind of phrase it like I'm hearing the phrasing of the singing of the song, and you'll you'll see how this sounds, okay? Um, here we go. Going down that road feeling bad. I'm going down that road feeling bad. I'm going down that road feeling bad, Lord, Lord. sounds like it fits the song and that's where you start very simple very easy just playing notes out of the chord while you're holding the chord down okay and that's where it starts so get some rhythm tracks play along with them slow them down to a speed that's comfortable for you and just practice this over and over and over again and the more you practice the better you're gonna get at it now next time we'll add a few notes more to that. We'll take the three notes with for each chord and we'll add two more to make the major pentatonic scale. And then we're just going to slowly build. We're going to build with the number of note choices that you have available to you. We're going to build with um, the way you target different notes at different times, okay? And we're going to build with some other, um, some other sort of tricks of the trade so that when you go to that jam session, and they call out a song you've never heard before, 
you will feel okay taking a solo on that because you've practiced this step-by-step -step method. Um, and again, um, if you want to get the video that Tim May and I did on this, it's at flatpick.com. Just search on uh, improvisation in the search criteria or go to the DVD section. And if you'd like to study with us in person, please come out to the Walnut Valley Festival in Winfield, Kansas on the third weekend of September this year. We'll be there on the Wednesday before the festival teaching a workshop. And or come to uh, Sisters Oregon the first weekend in October. And I'll be there with, uh, I think, Dale Atkins and Jack uh, Tuttle are also going to be teachers there. But I'll be there in, in, in part of my uh, segment of the weekend when I'm teaching, I'm going to go through these steps that I'm going through here on this video. So practice with that, have fun with it, and next week we'll go to the next step. This is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine.